everybody, welcome to an episode of Handle the Heat. I'm your host TK, and with me today is comedian Ebenezer Dibakwani. You may have seen him on shows like Ashes to Ashes, WTF with Tumi Morake, or on theater productions like A Beautiful Place, A Horror Story, but he's known for his stand-up comedy. Ebenezer, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, good to be here. How are you with Spicy Wings? I'm nervous. I nervous? feel like yeah, I feel like I'm probably going to be visiting the toilet often today. The name of the show is Handle the Heat, so that's the question. Can you handle the heat? That's a good question. We'll find out. All right. <laughs> in case you don't know, we're at 4th Avenue, 27 boxes in Marvel. Come here for the Hot Wings Challenge. Come buy these sauces. It's incredible. We know festive season's coming up, so it's going to be worth your while, worth your time. This is TK and you're watching Handle okay, the Heat. So My name is Ket Kenna Ebenezer Dubakwani and uh, uh, against popular belief, I'm still broke. <laughs> it's true, I want to bet the event now, of course, you know? <laughs> it's not a choice. Correct, let's try to I tell her not, not to, I tell her. Five run, five run, okay. Design, you watch all this, my design. True, not true. So if you get things, I came with a taxi, guys. I came with a taxi. And I don't mind that, not, I don't mind counting change or other things about the taxi. My problem about the taxi, you know those, those, those perverted grannies? That's my problem with the taxi. Those grannies who act like they're trying to pass, but they're perverted. You know those grannies who are like, so 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 <laughs> so, your eyes to fame began at the Savannah Comic Choice Award. Mm. Take us through that experience. Did you know you were going to win? Did you feel it in your gut already? No, I think a lot of people said they voted for me, so. I had an idea, but they didn't want to get my hopes up, you know what I mean? Is the, is the competition in the, in, the, in the comedic industry rough? Does it get tense? Because generally, all you guys are friends. Yeah, 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 I mean, like it, it gets hectic sometimes with because uh, we all have different styles of comedy. So a lot of our opinions of other people's comedy is like, you know what? How? So I mean, that happens, and obviously because it's a very personal art form, people take it personally. But yeah, comics are amazing. The comics are amazing, and uh, yeah, it just so happens that we all, also a lot, a lot of us are very sensitive and insecure. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a joke about how. Um, so this comedian Jeff Ross traveled to just for laughs, and he's like, um, came here in the plane, and all of us, as, I came with a lot of comedians, and we had to go through an insecurity check, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, it's heavy, it's heavy, it's heavy, and it's a very personal thing, a lot of our stuff comes from pain. But for the most part of it, it's beautiful. How's Javas doing? Javas is a fictional character, guys, you're making me admit that it's based off a bunch of people that I grew up with in Nelspray who loved hip-hop, but like, we're so behind, we're a bit of a, not really, really like that hectically, but we're a bit of a backward town, I mean, in comparison to Johannesburg, and so like, it's very weird, it just gets weird, people are like, yeah, you know what it is, crack electing in the house in Jaya, I was cracking, it's cool, cool, <laughs> We often see the, that out of Khao the comedy is a whole lot funnier, and I think it's because of the culture, the people, the community that make it funny, and then we bring it to the cities like Joburg, like Cape Town, like Durban, like Pretoria, mm. and you're giving them a touch of home, do you feel there's a disconnect somewhere though when you bring that? Um, I would say that uh, the job of a comedian is to translate. So, whatever you think the problem is, like you can't say things like I, used to, I, I, I say that a lot, and I um, and I apologize to my fans. I'm so sorry, right? But that some people don't get my humor, and sometimes I'll be in a space or in front of an audience that I don't want to perform in front of because they won't get me. But it's a comics job. It's like me saying that I'm funny in French, right? I kill it in French. I know I'm funny. And then I go to an audience that only speaks English and then I blame it on them like, so I can't even have a whole other English. Oh. You know what I mean? If they don't understand your jokes, if they don't feel you, you must find a way to connect with the audience. So yeah, so there is a disconnect usually, but then you must bring it into their references. You know what I mean? So I talk about Nelspeth, then I compare them to something that they know. So I'll use a reference like WHPO, RIP, or I'll use a reference like Wanang. And like, because my, like my life is in shambles, I'm this home, I'm sad. I feel like my life story was written by Wanang, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? And I tried to give my life back to Christ. I tried to give my life to Christ. I was like, Lord, here's my life. And Christ was like, I can't read this. I, where's the punctuation? What? All right, try Allah, try Allah. <laughs> I don't, you see what I'm talking about? So what's the reference? The, reference, the truth is, is my life is in shambles. What's the reference for now? So just using those references and trying to translate wow. those things. Are you ready to get into the next one? Uh, yeah, let's get into the next one. Let's not waste this month. Come on, 
Hassan Ben, Hassan Ben, Hassan Ben, see your kaka. Do you feel that you're kind of forced to lose your authentic authenticity? No, it depends. I mean, if you watch an act like Luis Martina, Luis Martina's act is literally, he, he prepares his act for an international audience. And also, you don't lose authenticity. It's what, what makes you funny. So your references, that's the only thing. I can't talk about MT's penis if I'm in New York. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, Donna, yo, I've, I've got a, my, what you call, uh, my bank account is so small. My, my, my penis is so small, it's like MT's penis. People will be like, uh, okay, who is MT? So you don't lose authenticity. Sometimes you just have to go and work again as if it's from the beginning to find out what is the culture, what are the references, what are the things that I understand. I can't go to talk about snap, uh, but again, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's punk, I mean. You know what I mean? I can't, you know what I mean? I, I can't talk about a micro I, I can talk about a micro but then I must translate it. Like, a micro those are like ancestors. <laughs> you doing it right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Like, yeah. So apart from Trevor Noah, we know is like a major public success. Mm. Who are the other successes who have gone international that South Africa made or not? Uh, so David Kibuka. Actually works at the Daily Show. You might recognize him from uh, the Permanente Show. Um, we've got uh, Robbie Collins has been going back and forth to New York. Uh, Matinga, he recently hosted the Bill Gates Foundation uh, the event. He was a host for it. Uh, he knows Bill Gates and Naomi Campbell, and yeah, you know what I mean. So like the gents were out there working. Riyad Musa, Tumi uh, Murage. Um, and Luis Matinga and, and Louis, oh, Luis Okola. They went and they recorded the Netflix specials. Kola is based in, in London. He has a place in London now. Yeah, and, and there's a young kid too in the next two years might start edging into the international scene. I don't know if you might have heard of him. His name is Abenezer Rokwane. Come on now. And there's a, so there's a strong desire for South African content now. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's, there, there is a strong desire, but it's getting kind of Stale. If you go to American television, that is like the capital of the world at entertainment. So you've got James Corden, you've got Jamie Oliver, you've got shows in the English. You know what I'm talking about? You've got Trevor Noah, a South African with a show, with a mainstream television show. Could you be who is, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who's a central figure? Idris Alba. You know what I'm talking about? It's international. If you dope, you dope. Uh, Charlize Theron went early, but now we're pulled Tutsi are getting into Hollywood. Um, so yeah. Moves are being made. Moves are being made if you hustle hard enough. Two bit you've got two Emmy nominations. You might be in, in an international show very soon. Come on, um, lady from Totti. Terry Petto. Yes, yes. Terry Petto. It's been international for a while. So I think um, it's not necessary. So I think people are just interested to hear the story, but now they know the story, you know what yeah. I mean? Now it's, now, so it's not even a thing anymore. Now you just, you just gotta be doper. That's good, that's good. It's time to get into that Sriracha. Oh, sriracha. 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 <laughs> Those are good promos. Chilean. You get that? Sriracha is the name of the sauce. And I'm saying Sriracha. Like as in now we're burning. For those of you guys who are not paying attention. Can't do this. Let's talk about the power of owning content. Mm -hmm. Do you feel we are slowly waking up to that idea of owning our own content? Even though it's a slower start. Some people get into these big contract deals and they get advances and whatever, but the downfall is it's not there. It's gone, yeah. And they can use it. In South Africa, we've got this, uh, the saga, South African Guild of Actors, has gone to Parliament to propose a bill that says, no, let us own our work. Years later, the gents from Ms. 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 is on television right now. Those gents live in the hood, <coughs> probably can't afford these wings, probably don't want to have them, when I'm talking about, because the content is owned and you paid minimally. So you're on television, but you're broke. People are out there in a taxi, like me, myself, coming in here in a taxi. People will be looking at me like, I'm at drugs. Well, no, <laughs> it's not, it's not drugs. They're not paying us, you know what I mean? You don't own the work. We give you 20 grand. You can do a whole season for like 20 grand and you'll never see another cent. Oh my word. Yeah. So, uh, oh, so. so you don't own your content to answer your question. Um, people get to use it, they get to twist it, they get to write spin-offs. You know what I mean? Once you sold the show, it's theirs. They get to write a spin-off, extend the season, you know, do some behind-the-scenes stuff, maybe sell it to another channel. Like, um, 
now now they just I think it's I don't know if it's Riti or Bent Onion selling a show to Amazon. Right? No, no shade. No shade to the production company. This is how the game is, I understand that. But if you own your content, that money is yours, man. So what's been your what's been your worst fail? Worst business deal fail? Oh man, um yeah, it's very personal. But um I did do some content for <coughs> some production. Right. And um yeah. Ended up not getting paid at all. Um, yeah, and I'm not getting paid at all. We were promised like a deal going forward. Okay, cool. We get to direct. We get writing credit. We, would, we also didn't. We, all we did was all they forced us to sign release forms. And I remember, so I get the, I get they forgot to sign on set, and I was also like refusing, you know, like avoiding signing release form because we were there every day. You know what I mean? And we were there writing and directing basically, but from behind. And then. We get an email like, yo, we need you to sign these release forms. And then I'm like, uh, yeah, send 100k and uh, I'll, I'll bring it to you laminated. <laughs> um, and then the lady there who works there, she was like, I'm gonna get fired. And so I didn't want to get a fire, so I just signed the release form. Um, and there's been no talks of another season. Sure. And I mean, we, when South African productions, you translate for yourself. You get a script in English, you translate for yourself. You don't get paid for translation. There's, there's, that's a job. To translate the script, yeah. you don't get paid for that, and they, they don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get any access to that money or any claim to another season if they're not actually off the writing you out. Sure. Wow. So yeah, there's been a lot of cash lost, and uh, you know, but yeah, going forward, I think it's just like being a producer, you wanna be, you have an executive rights or yeah. producer rights. Yeah. yeah. Sure. One time on Gali, you're gonna like that one. It looks Gali. Gali means yeah. mad in surf talk, guys. What's your funniest experience from being on Bandwa? Or mm. the funniest sketch you've made? <laughs> oh. My favorite sketch. Um, my favorite sketch, I'm trying to go through them because they're all pretty dope ones that I wrote, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, oh yes, my favorite sketch that I wrote was one where it's like a confession. In his gracious favor! I know I said I'm not confess, but I feel like my sins are too big. Oi. Oi. Is there anything ever too big for a god? I'm, I'm a compulsive liar. I don't even know if that's true. Uh, ah. I slept with a lady in this church. Yeah. I think it was your daughter. Hey! 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 What's it like a silly girl? I'm slightly annoyed. I have blasphemed. I have. Hey. Desecrate the sacrament. No, I mean, use the Lord's name in vain. Hey, I, 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 I have done literally everything that is wrong in the Bible. Hey, I don't want to be that man anymore. It's okay. I still wear cavellas. Hi, man. Long socks. Hey, man. Hi, Bazalwan. Hey, man. Under this head, we've got cornrows. Hey! 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 I will not stand for this. This is very inappropriate. Yes. 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 Instead of generations. Oh, I should do that. Hang it! Oh, it was a lot! It's hilarious. It's just really nice dope to see people in those spaces. And my favorite experience in that thing is that it's work that you wrote from your mind. Yeah. And then being actualized and people are now doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. Like you're seeing stars and people that you really admire in your roles, roles that you put together, and yeah. that's just like really a beautiful experience. That's, that's incredible. <sighs>
just time to switch it up. Caribbean Bloodfire. Caribbean okay. Bloodfire? What names are these? So with, with you having such a library of comedy and stand-up comedy and content and being on stages like or um, like the box that is known in Mabu Neng, everyone goes to the box. Mm -hmm. What has been your biggest joke on what has been your biggest joke and the biggest fail? You said a joke and you expected people to lose it and it backfired. Mm, what's my biggest joke? I'd say so far I've gotten my best response from Travis. You can check it out online. Um, my callback character that has been the biggest success as well. I've even won an award. And brought me here today to be tortured, you know what I mean? Um, no, 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 the biggest fail. I'm trying to remember the joke because I really, I still actually like it. But I'm forgetting. So there's a joke you like, you feel is a hit, and the crowd like mm, straight face you. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, but I forget, man. I'm trying to think of a recent failure. That's, that's actually not a bad joke. This talking makes it worse. Uh, what, what failed? There's a few jokes that have failed. <coughs> oh, man. I don't even know which one. One joke that doesn't get a big response is just how, how I talk when I'm broke. And I'm just like, have you ever been so broke that you went window shopping at the Sparta shop? <laughs> you know what I mean? In, in like, you know what I mean? And the bread aisle of the sponsor shop. And you know, as window shoppers, you lie. You like to lie as window shoppers. Because you always go for the thing that you can't afford. The guy will come to say, can we help you? And you'll be like, yeah, uh, how much is this Albany best of both? How much? <laughs> and he's like, it's 17 million. And you know why? You're like, yes, of course, because all the fiber and all the taste of the white bread, which is what we like. When you go to what you can afford. And I bought this unsliced stale, no name brand bread. How much? How much is that bread? And they'll be like, seven rand. And you're like, of course, yeah. Um, <sighs> the last lie, I didn't go withdraw. <laughs> like, seven rand? Relax, over. He doesn't really care. You. But I, I, I used to enjoy the joke. <sighs> Sorry, I don't know if I'm laughing at you. Senzei nina, yo, senzei. Is it too early to drink? <laughs> what time is it? Oh my gosh. You ready for a new sauce? Am I, am I ready? Can I? You look like you got it down. <laughs> it's second last sauce, you can do this. It's the second last way. Do this. I'm going to go ahead and for you. Oh gosh. Hey. If I don't make it home tonight, baby, know that I love you, I always loved you. Speak your own dating. Mm. What's the pressure like? was the second most painful thing I'd been through. I'm, I'm joking. No man, I mean, there's a lot of insecurities, right? Both ways. Well, you know, like at the beginning, you're not sure why they're with you, or you know what reasons they're with you, what reasons they have to be with you. And then also on their side, I, a lot of my fans, in fact, my core base is female. Right, that's my like, core base. So, it's those things, and I have to do extra things to just convince her. And, you know what I mean? Which is like my duty, I have to do that, you know what I mean? Because otherwise, how are we gonna live forever? You know, and I'm gonna go on tour, I'm gonna hit New York, I might even be moving to Cape Town for a few months. So I have to keep on reassuring her, you know. Yeah. But it's not awkward at all. No expectation of being funny? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm hilarious all the time. So, fortunately. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. It's time, for the last, it's time for the last one. You did well. You've been holding it down. It's not luck. I don't know, smooth cow. What is moon supposed to do? Taste it. Uh, 
Are you ready? I'm ready, you ready? Why is mine bigger than yours? Obviously, you already had that one. Because mine's bigger on the other side. Oh, okay, okay, so. That was a good idea. Cheers. <laughs> The top five memes that you feel have really did well in 2018 in South Africa. We love memes, we live on laughter, we, our country heals through laughter. Talk to us, the last five memes and how can we get a hold of you? What do you want to do? Um, I don't know if it's this year's meme, but uh, it made a comeback and it was working out the sipping tea of the Nami, Kermit, and me, also me. That was hilarious. Oh. Oh, there's more no coming from my beard. The, uh, the memes, the memes, the, the memes. Which memes? Oh, I need to remember. There's this meme about this face. I like that one a lot. Ah, it's a wimpy meme. Ah, it's all over the internet. Uh, but out of memes. You say me crazy. The people's bay. Hey! How could you? How could you do this? I'm going to work right now. <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean? How can we get home with you? And I left it about going on Facebook and Instagram. One word on Instagram. At our oh, underscore wow, another one. Shut up. And uh, watch out for very fast if you want. And uh, we'll see each other soon.